Good morning, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. We're so excited to see you here today. And uh, it's been two years since PWP has done any pre-worship singing. So Brittany came up and said, hey, let's do that again. So here we are. And I'm so glad that you're here a few minutes early to sing with us. Or you can just listen. Uh, the words will be up on the screen, I think, right? Good, perfect. Let's sing. The first song is called Grace Flows Down. Sing out out there. I know you can do it. It's early, I know. Um, uh, we are PWP, and uh, we occasionally come and we'll sing uh, pre-worship so that we can kind of center ourselves uh, for worship and prepare. And we love doing this. And I know the congregation has been singing some of their favorite hymns over the past couple of months. And uh, so we decided, well, we're just going to do our favorite ones today, too. So I hope that's okay with you. Uh, this one is one of the first songs we ever did together, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's called, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. Um, sing with us.
As we continue to glorify God this morning, we're going to do one of Norm's favorite songs. This is called Agnes Day. Sing with us. It's like three words. You can figure it out. i 
is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. glad to hear them sing, and I think they're going to be singing some more for us in a little bit, but uh, I want to welcome you for being here. We are so glad that you're here today with us as well, and that we get to be here in worship, and we get to do amazing things, and there's so much going on, not just today, but in the weeks to come, and so I've got a couple of people that need to come up and give some announcements, and then I've got a couple of announcements, and then we'll continue with our worship service and all the wonderful things we have, but I think Jen's going to come up really quick and share a few things about today and next week in particular. All right, you guys, we're officially six days away from Craftapalooza. Yeah. We're going to welcome hundreds and hundreds of people onto our campus, many of them for the very first time. This is the perfect opportunity to show them the hospitality that Santa UMC is known for, um, to just welcome them, make them feel loved and valued, and to also support all the local artists, um, small families, and crafters that we have in our community. Um, I have, we're going to reinstate the clipboard passing. Uh, we have some signups. We're looking for donations of baked goods uh, for our baked goods table. Uh, we're looking for helpers throughout the day. So please pass these clipboards along and if you see a spot you can fill, fill it. We're looking for all kinds of help from people to help break people, offer them breaks so that they can use the restroom or grab some food to people to help set up. Um, we just need it all. So please take a look at what we're looking for on there. Um, but in addition, today we have our chili cook-off and pie baking event in honor of our veterans. We have a wonderful table set up downstairs that already has some memorabilia on it. If you've brought anything that represents your time in the service or a loved one, please take it and put it on the table so that we can all look at it and um, share in that. And also, please, 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 we have six chilies that we're going to, that are going to be competing, um, and five delicious pies. So please, come down and enjoy a delicious and fun uh, afternoon of fellowship together. Thank you. Sister Sue, I believe you had a message as well. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is your missions moment. <laughs> um, if you had a Christmas shoebox gift still at home, don't worry. Uh, next uh, Sunday is the last day you can drop them off so we can get them on their way across the world for Christmas gifts. Great. Um, and also next Sunday is our Thanksgiving food basket distribution for local families. So if you have items to donate, please bring them next Sunday before service. We'll be down in Fellowship Hall. You can drop off your turkeys, your hams, your canned goods, and donations of gift cards. We'll need volunteers next Sunday as well to help us pack and distribute those food items. And now I have an announcement from Sue Mowry from the um, Missions Committee. Yes, at the end. Um, mark your calendars. Bethlehem Market is coming up Sunday, December 5th. Uh, it will be in person down in Fellowship Hall. And as always, we're going to have display tables with the opportunity to support many worthwhile ministries by purchasing products and making donations. Great place to get uh, Christmas shopping done. One of the missions that we're supporting this year is um, African Enterprises Foxfires from the money that we uh, raise. We'll also be auctioning goods and services with the proceeds going towards missions. If you're your group, here at church can donate a gift basket for the auction, please contact Sue Mowry. And if you can't provide a basket for auction, consider offering a service. So someone um, is offering like house cleaning services that people can bid on. We also have someone donating um, an enchilada meal, homemade. Uh, we have someone else uh, offering an hour of uh, landscape architecture that people can bid on. Um, and if you're also, uh, uh, someone is also donating a make your own Christmas card set that would be fun for the kids and families or, or other professional consulting services. Please prayerfully consider what you may be able to offer. Thanks. 
Take care. What did I say? There's so much going on and so much coming up, and it's such a wonderful way to get involved. I hope uh, you've signed those uh, clipboards and get be, be here next week, that you get involved in all the mission work that we're going to be doing in the next few weeks. Uh, it goes great along with the, the sermon that I'm going to be giving today. And also I've got a couple more things, of course. Um, uh, the Advent study is coming up, and it will start on Monday, I believe Monday the 29th of November, which is two Mondays... Three Mondays from now, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, it's already all jumbled up in my head, but if you'd like to come up, be a part of it, we're going to be looking at a book um, that's about the, kind of looking at the Christmas story and looking at God's grace through the eyes of the Grinch and how the Grinch stole Christmas. I hope that'll be a lot of fun, and so I hope that you can be there with that. Uh, we're not going to need the book, but if you want to get the book, you uh, can always find it online and get, be a part, but uh, I'm going to try to make it be something that anybody can come and be a part of, so if you don't want to have to get the book, you don't have to, uh, but it's going to be something fun, and I hope that you'll be a part of that with us. And then, um, other than that, we have adult Bible study after church today, so make sure you stay after church, and, oh wait, well, probably not today, right, um, because we're going to have the veterans day cook-off, but most Sundays we'll have uh, adult Sunday school afterwards, um, and the adult Sunday school on Monday nights is going to be taking a break during my pastor's study, and it'll be the Monday night pastor's study instead. Um, Naomi's Closet still, as always, needs volunteers. Uh, make sure you fill out your, your card saying that you're here, and that if you have any special hymns, and remember, if you've already get put in a hymn, you don't have to put it in again, but we would love to have your hymns. We've been playing some of the p favorite hymns in the past few weeks. We're going to keep doing that, and it's such a wonderful thing to get to be in worship and sing people's favorite hymns uh, together. If you have prayer requests, there are prayer request cards in front of you to fill out, and we'll be taking those up and sharing them in service a little bit later. Uh, we would love for you to be able to do that as well. And last Sunday was Consecration Sunday. We did our pledges. Uh, if you have not gotten your pledge in, we really, we would love to have you get it in because we're in the midst of doing the budgeting and we need as many uh, pledges as we can get so that can, we can know what we can hopefully expect for next year. Uh, so if you have a pledge of some amount of money, and I believe we've got a, a thermometer out in the, the, to show where our pledges were last year and where we are this year, and if you haven't made a pledge, there's probably going to be pledge cards available as well. Um, but now let us go to God in worship. I believe PWP is going to be singing one more song for us as kind of a centering hymn. Uh, let's let's free, uh, listen and sing together if you feel so called as we sing breathe. And you may remain seated for this as we center ourselves for worship. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread, your very word spoken to me. And now I'm destined for you. This is my daily bread. 
children and your disciples gather in worship today. As Jesus glorified God in all things, let our worship also glorify and be a blessing to you. As you have breathed life into us, God, we welcome and embrace your Holy Spirit living in us today and always. Amen. Children to come forward. You know, I'm always wondering, what is it going to take for Miss Jen to not have a job here anymore? And I thought, <laughs> let's paint in the sanctuary. Do you guys want to have a seat right here? We're going to talk. Let's talk first. Go sit down on the steps. I'll be right there. Does somebody want to help me with these paintings? Okay, who wants to hold this one? Okay, and who wants to hold this one? This one's new. Can you guys hold it together? Come on, let's go sit down on the steps. Let's share it. Good morning. Okay, come on over here. Good job. Hold them up. You want to sit down together? So the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about words, right? Words that maybe encompass. You want to sit over here, Mel? You want to sit by Amelia and you can help hold it? Words that encompass who we think we are or who we want to be in this church, right? And so the first word that we talked about was what? Brooklyn, what is the word on your painting there? belonging, right? And lots of people gave really good answers. They said they feel like they belong here because they're accepted for who they are, right, Amelia? Or they're loved, or they're valued, or they're trusted. These are all reasons why. Nope, nope, this one says what? Becoming, right? We'll get to that one in just a second, but right now we're still on belonging. So people said they feel like they belong here because they're valued, they're loved, and they're accepted for who they are, and they're trusted, right? They're given leadership in the church. So those are all very good reasons why they feel like they belong here. And last week, Pastor Jamie said becoming. That was our word for last week. And so we talked about how a butterfly becomes a butterfly through metamorphosis, right? It starts as a little tiny, what does it start as, Amelia? It starts as, what? A caterpillar. A caterpillar, yeah, it starts as a caterpillar and then it eats and eats and eats and eats and eats. A cocoon or a chrysalis, yep. And then it, And so we 
talked about people. We talked about saints last week that help us become our butterflies and how throughout our entire lives, we're always, always, always transforming and metamorphosizing, is that a word, into, into butterflies, right? And so we talked about the people who have fed us and nourished our faiths and our souls, and we wrote their names on these butterflies, and we put them into this big, beautiful heart with the word, what is that word again? Coming, yes, Amelia. Yeah, so today we have a new word. I wasn't done yet. Okay, what do you want to say? Maybe the caterpillar turns into the butterfly book. The, oh, the very hungry caterpillar, is that what you're talking about? That's a fantastic book. Well, today we have a new word, and our word today is, do you guys know what it is? Here, you hold your, no, that's always a good word, but today, Miss Jen's going to try to get up. Okay, today our word is going to be, being. Today our word is being, and we don't have it on our, our painting right here. Have you guys heard the phrase, um, being the hands and feet of Christ? Have you ever heard that phrase? What does that mean, do you think, being the hands and feet of Christ? Well, when we say that we're being the hands and feet of Christ, it means we're going out into the world and we're sharing God's love with all the people that we come across. We're helping them in any ways that we can. That's what it means to be the hands and the feet of Christ. And so today what we're going to do is you guys are going to lead the entire congregation. Congregation, there's going to be a little bit of time in between worship and our chili cook-off. And we really hope this painting will be out there that you can participate. But the children, you guys get to teach everybody here. Are you ready to teach everybody? So what we're going to do is <laughs> we're going to we're going to show we're going to promise that when we go out into the world that we're going to be the hands and feet of Christ and we're going to help the people who need help and we're going to share God's love with everybody we come across and as a way to pledge that as a way to promise we're going to put our handprints on the painting do you want to do that okay let's lay our paintings down that we have all right come pick your colors miss margie would you mind helping All right, get your hand in there, and we're going to turn it around this way. All right, that's good. We're going to put it right up here. Perfect, and Miss Margie's going to help you with the, the wipe. All right, good job. What color do you pick, Brooklyn? Let's go over there with Miss Margie. Everybody have your colors picked out. Yeah, go ahead. What color would you like, Melody? Okay. So... As you put your handprints on the painting, smear it around in there, get nice and messy. Miss Jen loves messy. It's how we learn. Yeah, just get your fingers in there. You gotta get your fingers too. We're activating all parts of those big, beautiful brains here. Good job, now lift it up. Come around here, love. Okay, mix them on the plate. Up here. So the children are putting their hands on the very top of the painting, and we invite you, go on over to Miss Margie, We're going to invite you folks to outside place your handprints and you're going to layer it over the children's handprints um, in coordinating colors. Oh, that's beautiful. What colors do you girls pick? And then we'll see if Miss Jen is here next Sunday to do children's moments here. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and after you've done it, you can sit down on the, and we'll wash really good when we leave. Okay, go to Miss Margie. Oh, yes, that's nice. So as you guys place your handprints on the painting, you're thinking about all the people. That's good. I think that's good. Good job. Go to Miss Margie. She'll help you wipe it off. Yeah. <laughs> nice and messy. How about you, Marilyn? What colors do you want? You want to mix? And yellow? Oh, these are so pretty. It's a beautiful rainbow of our love, our handprints. Just really squish it right in there. 
Okay, come on around here. And you're going to put your hand right there. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so right there, come on. Good job, Marilyn. And then you can go see Miss Margie. She's got the wipes for you. Ooh, good job, Holly. You're going to put yours right there. Nope, have a seat. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray, and then we'll go wash our hands really, really well. Okay, go get your wipe. All right, as you, guys are, as you guys are wiping your hands, can you be in a state and an attitude of prayer that can be holding your hands out or folded, eyes open or closed? <laughs> Please pray with me. Lord God, ready, Brooklyn? You want to come pray with me? Come sit over here. Lord God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks for all the ways that we belong here in your body, Lord God, in this community, for all the ways that we are continually becoming believers, Lord God, and for all the ways that we will go out into the world and be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go wash our hands. Thank you for your patience. So this next hymn <laughs> was my choice. Um, this song's special to me because we actually sang this at my wedding almost two years ago. This was the hymn that we had chosen. So it's got a special place in my heart because of that. So could you stand with us and sing? This morning's scripture is um, in the book of John, verses 1 through 10. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I know, we, so I was thinking to myself, we should probably have had those, uh, them go and lay hands on everybody after they got that paint. <laughs> We go forth into the world with a little bit of paint on everybody. But as you've just heard, and if you've been here the past couple of weeks, then you know that we've been looking at three words in particular. Um, uh, belonging, becoming, being. As a vision statement uh, for who we want to be as a church. What's something that we're planning on implementing uh, in the coming weeks and months. And I can't stress to you how important it is for any group of people, but especially a church, to have an idea of what our vision is. There's actually even a proverb, uh, 20, Proverb 29, 18, that has this in what some translations. It says, without vision, the people perish. Now, there's a good reason for that, because vision is about seeing beyond what we can literally see around us. It's about finding hope in things that might not actually be able to be seen or felt at the time that we have hope in them. They might not even, we couldn't even imagine them existing right now, given the state of the world or the state of the church. And yet, vision is about seeing beyond the horizon to what God is doing and what God will be doing in the future. A couple of weeks ago, I shared a story about a, uh, that I think encapsulates this idea of vision that's beyond what we can see in an a artist, a famous artist who was painting a giant mural on the side of a cathedral, or inside of the cathedral, and he was painting just the background. So it's all blues and grays, and his friend came in to see his progress, and after he takes a break, he comes to his friend and goes, isn't it amazing? Don't you see what, it's, uh, what an amazing and beautiful thing this, this mural's going to be? And of course, the friend goes, I just see a bunch of grays and blues. And he says, oh, that's right, I forgot. You can't see what I see. I only see the finished product, but you're still only seeing this background. And to me, that kind of vision helps keep us moving forward. It helps keep us growing. It helps keep us get excited about what's around the corner, regardless of where we might find ourselves right now. And given the struggles and the problems we are facing right now, and we're still in the midst of a pandemic and the effects of that pandemic. And so it could be easy for us in that or any number of other situations going on in the world right now, for us to lose our hope, to perish as we get bogged down in what feels inevitable, and then we teach ourselves that it is inevitable because, well, what's the point of even trying? And then, then we don't try, and so the things that we thought were inevitable become inevitable. Instead, to believe in what God has in store for us, to believe that there's something just over the horizon that we might not even be able to see, to believe that even though we can't see it, we know God is doing miraculous things if we have the faith to follow, to live into, to strive, to do the amazing and miraculous things God has in store for us and be the church God wants us to be is a life-changing prospect. So given all of that, we've been looking at this vision of three words, belonging, becoming, being. 
And I've said that I don't think this is a new vision of who we're going to be. This isn't shifting everything that Santee United Methodist Church has ever thought and done into something completely different because now you've got a new pastor and he has a different idea of how to do things. Rather, I hope that this is tapping into the DNA of who we already are at Santee. And, but that with all things, as with all things, there are ways that we can improve upon it, that we can perfect it, perfect ourselves into a communi- as a community into a piece of God's kingdom on earth. Now, at this point, we've already discussed the first two of these words. We've discussed that a church that does a great job, this is a church already that does a great job of making people feel like they belong. Or as many people that I've ever talked to say, it just feels like a family, you know? Brene Brown uh, once talked about belonging, as I said in my sermon, uh, as the, a place where you want to be a part of it, and the people that are there want you to be a part of it. And they're like, oh, we're so grateful you're here. Whereas fitting in is when you want to be a part of it and... The place could care less. The people could care less. As long as you fit into, you know, don't make waves, do the things that we do and the ways that we do them, sure, you can come if you want. Now, that's a huge difference. And ultimately, there is something central in the work of ministry in making people feel like they belong. That we don't have to fit in. That we don't have to change something integral about what we know of who we are to be a part of this family, to be siblings with Christ. And God did that work for us, which means that as a church that perfectly lives out that value will be a place that works tirelessly with all that we are to make sure that all people feel like this is a place that they belong, that it's a place where they are wanted, where indeed they are needed. Their perspectives and their talents make us better. Now that means growth on the part of everybody that's already a part of it. Because the, to be honest, radical belonging requires a lot of the people who already belong. You and me. Because you know there's a fine line, you know this from your own experiences, between creating belonging for yourself and belonging for everybody. Belonging for yourself at times can make into cliques. You find a group of people that you like, and then you keep everybody else out. Because if you bring that other person in, then you're not going to feel like it's as special as it used to be. It can be very easy to assume that maybe because we feel comfortable, oh, other people must feel comfortable too. All the while, maybe even subconsciously, we're creating barriers for others to step in. And in the end, we create a situation where they have to fit in rather than belong. Which is why the second word that we've discussed is becoming. Because the work of creating a place that people belong is hard. But it's also something that we're all called to do. Not because we have to do it, because if you don't, then you don't fit in and you can't be a part, you don't belong. But because... After we know we belong, we want to strive with all that we are to make sure that others get to know this wonderful thing that they belong to, that we live and strive into the hope and gospel message that the grace of God comes freely, that God's love for us comes freely. And so we want to go and spread that message so that others will know they belong to That's the work of discipleship. The Methodist work, as we used to call it, of perfection. Of course, as I've said before and I'll say again, to me, perfection isn't saying, well, someday you're going to wake up and go, well, I'm a perfect person. I don't ever have to think about anything ever again. It's pretty great being perfect. Hopefully one day you'll get to be as perfect as I am. But rather that if you're striving towards perfection, you're never saying the words, I'm good enough. There's always something we can grow to be better at. There's something we can, uh, edges, growing edges we can work on. Every moment of every day, we are striving to be a more loving person, both towards God and 
We have to do that by loving each other more and more perfectly. We have to create a place that is belonging for all people, which means we have to look and say, what am I doing that's not helping somebody else know that they too belong? But in order to share that message, you have to do more than just talk about it. And that's probably my biggest weakness. Um, uh, Carmen will tell you I'm a talker. Um, I'm a, I would say a philosopher and a theologian. She'd say, uh, full of hot air, you'd probably agree with her. But I could and would sit around and just talk about all these things in theory forever, if I could. Uh, talk about best practices, say, you know, this is how we should live. But, you know, it's, the temptation is great for just talking and sitting around and talking about it and never actually get around to doing it. Perhaps because the pursuit of perfecting the method, making sure that every little piece you've dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and once I've got all that done, then I'll go and work it out. Or maybe behind that, you're afraid it's not going to work. But the reality is, while there is a need to talk about growing, talk about introspection, talk about the things that we need to do to becoming more loving people, because if you're not talking about it, then you're not doing it probably correctly, you do have to at some point live it out. Which is why the third and final word is being. Being is an action word. Because we have to move into action. Indeed, all that we do as a church needs to be about pushing ourselves back out into the world for many reasons. Perhaps the most traditional is sharing the gospel. But we share that by showing people that they also belong and have worth. And we do that by helping those in need, realizing that love can't be th theoretical. It has to be an act. Say you love people, but do you really love them if you never actually interact with them? Being puts action into our words. I think James once said it in this way, which was, faith without works is dead. And that's a powerful truth. Because until the rubber hits the road, I mean, you can say you love people all you want. You can say you have faith all you want, but you got to prove it at some point. It's a lot easier to love the idea of someone than it is to love the person that has all those things that grate you and get on your nerves. And then you have to somehow say, what does it mean to love this person that, you know what, I'd rather only interact with at 50 feet with a pole. And yet that's the work that we've been called to do. We're not sitting around waiting for God to come back and fix it for us. We're called to go out into the world and share this wonderful message of love, of hope, of belonging, of uh, possibility that their world can be changed and perfected. We do it because we're passing that message along. Someone gave it to us. It's part of the reason I chose this passage from John today. Indeed, that is the passage we read is part of Jesus' final prayer and teaching. According to John, all of this was said during the Last Supper, as they ate their final meal together. And you get the impression as you read not just this, but the whole passage of Jesus' final sermon to his friends, that he was trying to get every last piece of advice, because he knew what was coming. And then he asks God to bless and watch over these people that he has come to love over the past three years. More or less, Jesus prays to God saying, I have done what you asked, God. I have glorified your name and taught these people to glorify it too. I have done all the work that you asked me when you sent me here and shared your message of love. But now that my time is short and the last work is at hand, use that work to glorify me so that they will know to keep continuing this message and share it with others. In verse 17 he continues, Sanctify them in truth, and your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. 
See, God sent Jesus into the world to share a message of love, of grace, of forgiveness, and of belonging. And Jesus, in turn, sends us out into the world to make sure others have heard it too. Indeed, part of the reason I think we uh, are using being as the first word here is that beyond the alliteration of having belonging, becoming, being, it connects us to the common way that we think about ourselves as a church the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Christ. As we say in our communion liturgy every time we come together, make these gifts and bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. See, we're called to be the body in the world, which implies Christ is our head. And as you, anybody that has a head and a body knows, uh, the head, the brain is what, guy, uh, everybody I think has had that experience, yeah? The brain is what gives us the body its movement. It tells what the hands what to do, but without the hand, you can't do it. Without the foot, you can't get there. You see, Christ may be the one guiding us and where to go, but we're the one doing it. That's who we're called to be, to get out into the world, to continue the work Jesus started and finish the work Jesus started. To move beyond learning our place with God, to grow to a place where we become the co-workers with God in bringing about the kingdom of God. And I hope that here this might actually be the place where you suddenly realize that this three words fit together in a really interesting way. Uh, Belonging, becoming, being, they're not just three separate ideas. They're three ideas in a sequence. You come to a place where you know that you belong, and then you say, if I belong, I want to grow so that I can help other people belong. And so you become more and more like Jesus. You look to the example of uh, Jesus Christ and the love that he had, and you want to make more of that. You want to make sure other people know that they belong the way that you belong. And then you go out into the world and you be that. You come in, you look up, you go back out, and then you bring other people in. And they look up and they go out and in and up and out and over and over and over. And it becomes a cycle that creates a world that changes. Because you, over the course of your life, might change five people's lives. And that's being extremely conservative. And that person will, each of those five people will go on and change five. And each of those will go on to change five and so on and so forth. And the world can't help but be changed. That's exponential growth, my friend. Belonging, becoming, being is the work of making disciples. Now, what does it mean to say that being is something we strive to be? Like, what does it mean to say that we strive to be the hands and feet of Christ? And how are we already that at CMT United Methodist? Well, I know that many of you already know there is a lot in being the hands and feet that already exists at this church. The ways that this church gets involved in mission and service to the community honestly is somewhat astounding to me. Uh, I mean, I've served three other churches in my time, and I'm sure there are lots of other churches that have a bigger footprint, bigger impact on their community, but I doubt there are many the same size as this congregation that do as much as this congregation. From pancake breakfast to Naomi's closet to, uh, you know, collecting goods and things from the, the blessings box uh, and so many other things from Palooza and from the, the ways that we get involved and the, the places that we go and the people that we help. I promise you, in the year that I've spent getting to know people in this community, people, as soon as you say, oh yeah, I'm the pastor at CMT United Methodist, they always have a story about, oh, that's the church with the blessing box. Oh, that's the church that does this or that. This church has a reputation for active being love. 
But to make it our vision, perhaps the expectation of who we are, is takes it a step further. And again, I think probably there are many of you that already live this out. But it means that we make it a reality, the idea that every member of the congregation is in mission. That we encourage everybody to get involved somehow. And honestly, that doesn't mean that you have to come and be a part of the, the activity that the church is doing. It means that we're going out into the world and doing wonderful things wherever that may be, wherever you are called. And if we're, you're called to a place that the church isn't involved in, uh, please, by all means, let us know so that we can be involved too. But if not, then go out and do it. We want you to love better and make sure other people know that they belong and are worthy and have worth and value wherever that may be. It also means that if we have any small groups, that they actively seek ways to be involved in things outside the church grounds together on a regular basis serving together. That we get back to something that I'd like to do in the years to come, serve Sunday. Where instead of coming and worshiping in this place, we go out into the world and worship with our hands and feet as we minister to the world. Maybe we do it multiple times a year. And that we maybe welcome people to join us in that work, even if they're never going to come through the doors of our church. And that we show the world that while we may say we love you, we're also going to take the time and energy to show that we love you too. That people will look to us and see Christ, who is our head, working through us. Or to put it another way, there's a, a wonderful quote by St. Teresa of Avila, which says, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body then on earth but yours. That is what being is like. And I don't know if it's really a stretch for us to get to that place here at Sam Creek. Again, maybe some of you are already living that out. But I think all of us need to continue to work to become that more and more. So that through all of our being, we are all people that know they belong. And that we make sure all other people know they belong too. So in turn, they can begin this journey with us. I don't see any of this belonging, becoming, being as something that is going to be a facade. It may take a little bit of reorganization or reimagining, but it does not mean finding a new foundation. It simply means living into what God has already been doing and seeing hope for the ways that it will connect us to the greater world and change that world for the better. By living in the faith that if we do, God is going to perform miracles to make that happen. Miracles in us that, as in miracles in us, as we grow as a, into people of love, that you know, two years, ten years, twenty years ago, we could never have imagined ourselves to be in the place we are now. Miracles in others that we have yet to even meet. Miracles in our world as we do things that right now seem impossible. But God has already promised that it's possible. And I'm excited to see us I pray you are as well. Let us pray. We've put the words... Um, up on the screen for you because I know sometimes it's difficult to understand with the mask. This is called Christ Be Magnified. Thank you. 
Father, we lift up the prayers of your people today. Hear and receive the prayers lifted aloud and those remaining in our hearts, Lord. Hear us, rejoice with us, and hold us today. God, we pray today for the pandemic. We are tired and frustrated, God. Give us patience and kind hearts to remember that so many are still sick and still dying. We continue to lift up all of the health healthcare workers. We give thanks for those recovering and for the children now able to receive a vaccine. As we pray for patience and strength, let our actions and our hearts seek to glorify you, God. God, we know you call us to be your hands and feet in the world. And we look to our world. We are overwhelmed by all the needs that needs to be done. God, we pray for your guidance today. Give us eyes to see where we should go and loving hearts to serve as you lead us. As we pray for your direction, let our actions glorify you, God. God, we pray today as a people blessed by you. Jesus prayed for his disciples, lifting them to you, God, as he prepared them for a life of service to you. We lift all our prayers today in the name of Jesus who loved us, who prayed for us, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we have glorified God through music, prayer, scripture, and message, we now have the opportunity to glorify him, our giving. Let us give prayerfully and joyously today. Will our ushers please come forward to receive the morning's tithes and offerings.
Every good gift in our lives comes from you. We are blessed and thankful. God bless these offerings of our resources and of our lives today as we seek to serve and glorify you in all things. As we stand here, we know you stand with us and lead us out into the world. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing one of Jan's favorite hymns, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of love. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of death and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Thank you. 